Hello and welcome back to the Irish Racing YouTube channel. Another episode of MS Eyecasters in association with Tony Bet. Cheltenham November meeting this weekend. Plenty of Irish representation in there. Just had a look through. I'm going to pick out five Irish horses who I think are worth following at nice each way prices. First one who caught my eye um, on the day one of the November meeting on Friday, 1.45 in the listed novices chase over the three miles. Body one. I'm a massive fan of this horse. He was a really, really good hurdler. I think rated 155 in that discipline. Even going back to his novice hurdling campaign, he was third in the Martin Pipe. Absolutely loves Chedlam in that Martin Pipe. He looked like he really a winner for a long time. He got pinned down in the end by Oroko, but won a handicap hurdle at this meeting last year off 147. Ran in the stairs, hurdle, ran a great credit there. He ran well for a really long time against some top quality grade one staying hurdlers. He's tough, he's battle hardened, he comes in here fit, got off to a great start, he's chasing life. He was he won in Galway first time out, went on then. Um but ran in a trappy race, I suppose, at Wexford behind Hartwood and Corbett's Cross, but comes here fit. I think he could be a tough enough nut for these kind of younger novices to crack. He's got an awful lot of racing experience, he's good to jump, he loves Cheltenham. He's there at double figure prizes at the moment, and I think he's a really, really interesting runner for the get against. Next big eye catcher on the Friday, Alphonse Legrand, um, a horse who's had his fair share of controversy already this summer, I suppose. But he's been entered in the 110 and 445 on Friday, handicap hurdles over two mile and two mile five for Tony Martin, back in the care of Tony Martin. Look, he hasn't set the word alight over hurdles so far in his career. He hasn't won, I think, over hurdles in almost exactly a year, rated 97 in that discipline but like he won a Cesar which will cross the line first in a Cesar which I suppose off a rating of 87 so if he can translate that flat form to hurdles at all you'd have to imagine he's really really well handicapped he showed he's progressive so far this summer on the flat he's fit he's ready interesting that Tony Martin puts him in here and it could be another big day in England for the Tony Martin team Going to move on to the Saturday then looked as loads of Irish horses entered across the two days I think over 40 horses entered on Friday alone, one who I thought might fly a little bit under the radar on the Saturday in the 145. It's a two mile novice chase, grade two. The seal mode for Tom Mullins, I just thought it was a really, really interesting one. Look, he's a horse, I suppose. Definitely not one you trust with your life. So, might come with a little bit of a health warning. And his form does come in and out a bit, but at times he's shown you promise. And I was just really, really taken by his. Chasing debut in Pontestown a few weeks ago under Danny Mullins. I suppose he always looked like a horse kind of made for fences, a big, strong horse. But just the way he went out and jumped his fences that day, like even when he made small mistakes, he kind of landed running and was quick away from his fences. And I think in these novice chases around Shelton, especially over the two miles, jumping can be a massive, massive asset. And his jumping has st stood the acid test, I suppose, in Pontestown. Like even when he kind of came under pressure towards the finish, um, he was quick and slick. Um, he, he's 12 to 1, 14 to 1, possibly even bigger on the day. Um, I think the nice ground will help him as well. And look, it could be a good place. I don't think you probably need a superstar to win this race. Lord of Sod for the Skeletons probably looks the, the one to beat. But um, I think at each way prices for Seal Moore could definitely outrun his odds. Next one then to catch the eye, the 225, the big one at Cheltenham, the Paddy Power. Gold Cup on Saturday, I think Let's Go Champ is a really, really interesting runner for Henry de Bonghead. Henry's horses are absolutely flying in the past few weeks. I think 31% strike rate in the last three weeks has, has had some big winners um, throughout the past few weekends as well. So I'm hoping Let's Go Champ can keep that role going. Look, maybe a bit of an obvious one. Henry de Bonghead horses around Cheltenham, and they're always really, really easy to back, I suppose, given his record at the course. But... I just think he's an interesting horse. He's a nine-year-old, but still really lightly raced. I think he's only had five starts so far over fences. He won a really competitive-looking handicap chase at the Pontius Sound Festival. Maybe slightly disappointing in the Galway plate, but that can be forgiven. I, I think good ground is probably key for this fella, so conditions at Cheltenham on Saturday should be perfect. Um, at the moment, he's got a lovely weight, 10 so too, so hoping um, all the horses up the top there stay in this one. I think he's a really interesting runner and with the form Henry's horses are in um, when he's there 10 or 12 to 1 I think he looks an obvious each way bet. Last one I am going to give a mention to I just thought a really eye-catching entry Shulin for Paddy Toomey has been entered in the listed mare's bumper the last race on the Saturday at Cheltenham. She's an order of St. George four-year-old filly. She was really, really eye-catching I thought on debut when she was behind a good horse of Willie Mullins's um, at Bananobe. Um, Willie spoke pretty highly of peaceful at that day. So form of that looks strong. She went on then and won her own bumper in Bananobe again. 
the next day under Johnny Barry, one hand and heels that day, as easy as you like. Went on to go and then to run in a listed bumper. Um, she was fourth that day. It looked a really strong race. And for whatever reason, I'd say things maybe just didn't go her way. Um, I, I just think it's really interesting that Paddy is thinking of traveling her over here. Um, obviously, a man, you know, when he targets horses at, at these uh, listed and group level races on the flat, he's not too far along. So I wouldn't doubt him over jumps either. So Shirlene definitely want to keep an eye on and. Given she was only fourth the last day, um, she could be there at a nice enough price, which you don't get too often about Paddy Toomey runners. So I've been watching it to see if she declared and definitely want to keep an eye on in the last on Saturday. Those are five I'd be interested at, um, at possibly each way prices at the weekend. Let me know in the comments below who you're, who you're looking forward to seeing. I'll be back on Friday with Don McLean to preview the action in much more detail looking at Navin and Cheltenham. So hope you enjoy the show and make sure and like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. 